Hello, I'm Gail Moak. I'm the president of Friends of La Leche League. And we are here um, as part of our oral history series, interviewing people connected to the history of Friends of La Leche League. We're celebrating our 35th anniversary. So today, as you can see, we have Marian Thompson. She is the co-founder of La Leche League International. And just as she was at the picnic, which marks the beginning of La Leche League International, she was also at the conference that marks the beginning of Friends of La Leche League. So Marion, what do you remember about that event 35 years ago? Well, first I want to admit that my part was so minimal. I was amazed when I was given a plaque at one conference that said I was, wait here, I've got it here. Oh, cool. It said, in appreciation for initiating the uh, alum the inter La Leche League International Alum Association. I was at another meeting and somebody came and got me and said, you got to come with me. And I went in this room and they gave me this plaque <laughs> and I left because I had to be back to the other session. So that was amazing. So what was my part? I was at the conference in Texas. And the only thing I really remember was the conversation we had after the conference with the ACLs. I think there were three of them maybe, and I'm sure Ellen must have been one of them. Um, they, the ACLs had cooperated in doing the closing session. And so we were just sort of sitting around relaxing and the whole idea, the discussion of having an alumni association came up, which I guess Ellen was probably ready for. She was thinking of it and then. And on the board, which I was on the board at that time, some of us occasionally just would have little mentions and say, you know, an alumni association would be so nice. But this is in the days before the internet. So we were never in touch with each other. We lived in other parts of the country and we might have those passing uh, ideas shared once in a while. But I love the idea. I love the idea of staying in touch with leaders after they finished with their work as a leader or their children were older. So we talked about it. And one of the things I remember they talked about was going on trips. And I thought that would be wonderful because you'd be going with people who you really like and are comfortable with, you know, and so I told them I would go back to the board and I would bring the uh, paper that they put together a presentation of what they wanted to accomplish and the board voted for it immediately. There wasn't anybody, you know, who didn't think it was a good idea. So that was it. I mean, I just sort of said great and I brought it back to the board and um, you know but Ellen and the other uh, leaders who worked with her you know they're the ones who really decided on what it should be about and put a pen to paper which is what you did in those <laughs> days and uh, you know thought it through so we I am so grateful to them because it's just brought so much joy into my life and to anybody's life who stays in touch. Everybody's so excited to stay in touch, to see the leaders from years ago that, you know, you had a connection with. Uh, I found in one of the files, this is a postcard that you sent to Ellen. Oh, so, what did I say? When I, when I looked at it, I said, oh my goodness, it's even Marion's handwriting. And you write, it must have been right after the conference because you write, I'm getting a good response from everyone I've talked to about the Alumni Association. And then you mentioned Betty Wagner and a few other people. And um, so there it is. Oh, good. Well, <laughs> proof. <laughs> proof that I did my job. You, <laughs> yes. We were, thank you so much, because it's oh. it's been um, an organization that I really enjoyed being part of. Mm -hmm. so thank you. So what do you think of the original vision of when it was called the Lila Chile Alumni Association and how it is implementing that vision today? Well, I think they're really trying to keep moving forward in terms of what the connection can be, what 
uh, they can do to make it even more valuable to these leaders. And, you know, they're just not sitting, uh, going on their first perception of what it should be. So they're, you know, looking at it all the time. And I think it's the time to mention about the change in the name, because, you know, when uh, you came out saying you were looking for a new name and what popped into my head was what Dr. Ratner wanted to do years ago. He wanted to start a group for the fathers to, you know, the fathers are, were so helpful and an important part of La Leche. And he was going to call that group Friends of La Leche League. And that never happened. And that uh, title was just sitting, waiting for somebody to recognize it and think it would be helpful. So I, I just love that Dr. Ratner also is a part of it uh, going on because he was such an important part of the Leche League. Yeah, looking through the files, I see they had the same questions about alumni back then that we do now is that first of all, the Latin is hard for many of us these days. Mm -hmm. uh, what actually alumni means and um, it, we're, it's, it's, not an, it's not a group that you have to graduate from being a leader. You can be a right. part of it. Yeah. So yeah, that, was, yeah. that was one of the reasons. But then I, I was looking through some of the old files and another idea was to call it the doula organization. Oh. As, as you know, we were, uh -huh. yeah. No, I think it's important for them to realize you don't have to graduate from being a leader, mm -hmm. that you can still be a leader and be part of it. Mm -hmm. And I think especially if you've got older children, because the discussions among parents and mothers of older children uh, are so helpful and in continuum. I mean, I continuum began to mean to me what the Leche League news met in the beginning when you would go get it from the news from the mailbox and sit down and read it all the way through. That's what I would feel when Continuum would come out because it now met me where I was as an older woman. So Marion, you have been part of alum trip since I think St. Augustine. You've been on every trip since then. What do the trips mean to you? Um, well, first of all, going to St. Augustine was very special. I had never been there, and I finally got to see this place that, you know, was responsible for our name. But what is really brings a smile to my face when I think about the trips is meeting other leaders. And I wish I didn't forget names, but even one time when it uh, was a leader and her sister and her mother came and her mother and I were the same age, just about a year or two. We had such a great time sharing books we liked and talk. In fact, I lent her my Kindle for a while so she could read the book that I was reading at the moment. Uh, so you just never know who's going to show up and it's always so joyful to make those connections again. And how was it traveling with the other founders? Because I, I think you mentioned, or one of the founders that we had on the trip mentioned that you actually didn't get that much time together. Uh, well, that probably was Marianne. I don't know if the other founders were able to come. Mm -hmm. I was scratching my brain or my head. Um, but yes, Marianne and I really love that because we didn't. I mean, when our children were small, we didn't have time together except when we got together to write, write the womanly art or, or uh, have a meeting. And, but this time we could just talk, talk about our families, you know, or anything that came into our mind. And because it was somebody that we really spent a, almost a lifetime with it was a real treat to be able to spend that time together so that was always nice i i would always a uh, room with marianne uh too during that time and um it was just you know we we wouldn't have had that without going on those trips so the law league alumni association was also very involved in conferences when we had um in-person conferences. 
Um, so for instance, they would do it, put on a tea. Yes. And, um, part of the tea was a we remember ceremony. Mm -hmm. What are your memories from those, those events? Um, I'm finding, well, now the re remember ceremonies are harder to get there because there are so many people that are close to you and cl close to your age and you've had a long history with. But without the alums, we wouldn't have any remembrance of leaders. I mean, which just seems horrible uh, that, you know, that they could just be let go and nobody knows about them. But this is such a beautiful thing to have these tributes and also to be reading the names out loud, uh, you know, and followed by that lovely poem. Uh, it's, it's just very special and it adds so much as to how, how what we feel about leaders, how grateful we are to the leaders who are La Leche. I mean, La Leche wouldn't be going if it was still the founders. So they are La Leche and we just are so grateful to them. And that we remember is a little tribute, but you know, at least it's something. I agree. It is a beautiful ceremony and also heartrending, you know. I'm, it is. I, I'm yeah. a little bit teary eyed right now thinking about yeah. it. Had... Me too. <laughs> <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> I was um, I was recording. I was uh, just doing some tech work on the on the We Remember ceremony that you just did. Uh, you just recorded, and uh, so I wasn't paying too much attention. But then I heard a really good friend's name be mm. mentioned. And it was like, oh my goodness! So yeah. I take a little break. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but also, I you know want to mention how grateful I am for those women who came into my life. Other people have heard me say it, but I finally decided the leche was something like a big industrial magnet that went around the globe and just pulled up the people that we needed in our life mm -hmm. and needed not just to do the work of the leche, but needed for our own nourishment and growth and becoming better persons. So, you know, what a, a great treat to be mm -hmm. part of that. I think we've talked a lot about history. I mean, but what are your hopes for the future, both for Friends of La Leche League and La Leche League International? Uh, for, for Friends, just they keep on going, keep on going. Mm -hmm. um, and that they, more and women realize what it offers for them because it it is a natural next step after being a mother of small children or babies or that sort of thing. And that my hope for La Leche is that we get through our differences, that we continue to respect each person's right to have a different opinion so that we can just calmly and quietly talk together about those differences and be able to come to some kind of resolution. There, you know, the old days they used to say, if you're presented with a problem, there must be a solution. And the problem signals something that needs to be solved. So the thing is to approach it with respect, reproach it not with anger, approach it and say, Thank you. Now we've got to really look at this because it's going to make us stronger and better when we get through it. But we have to get through it first. So with social media, it seems like there's so much strife going on. Oh. Do you feel like in the 65 years of La Leche League's history, it's been, there's always been strife or is it particularly worse now? We didn't know about it <laughs> like we know now. But also, it seems now it's mo more polarized, but that's the whole world is, you know, p politics, science, everything, it's polarized. But, um, and the fact that 
people can speak quickly on Facebook or whatever, and it can be very hurtful. And, you know, you should think before you write, you should think before you uh, say something about somebody. And you should, I would say, you should think how important is this? And if it's important, say it in a way that it can be heard. Because if somebody is yelling or trolling you because of your position, you, you don't even consider what they're saying because it's not important. You're hurt. You know, if they want you to listen to what they're saying, then they've got to say it in a way that you can hear it. So I, I think that's the big one of the big problems with Facebook. I love Facebook for seeing my family and grandchildren. Just today, I got to see my youngest great-grandchildren child, who's now 18 months old, Penelope. And, uh, you know, it was a video and just, it brings so much joy to your life. So I, you know, my hope is that people can use it in a good way uh, and not use it to hurt other people or to um, insist on your way is the only way and refuse to discuss it. I am very grateful in Friends of La Leche League that uh, maybe because we're a little bit older, we came from a generation with different manners, but mm -hmm. a lot of that strife we've avoided in Friends of La Leche League. And we've always wanted to be like a safe haven for people who could come in with different viewpoints, different perspectives, and talk respectfully to each other like you. you yes. Yeah, come to think of it, that's really true. And um, when I started another look with breastfeeding and HIV AIDS, I invited people with very different views, and yet everybody treated the other pe person with respect, and we accomplished a lot because of that. So, yes, I think that's wonderful that I hadn't even thought about it, but how friends has actually kept people to be friendly. Good. And not perfect in every situation, but we do try. <laughs> Oh, who is perfect? <laughs> I haven't met that person. <laughs> so when you think back to the Friends of La Leche League, what brings a smile to your face? The people, the people I meet. Uh, that's the conversations I have, the, the surprise at seeing somebody I haven't seen in 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 40 years, um, you know. But at the same time, I want to thank everybody who's contributed to the founders being able to attend those trips. I mean, for some of us, we would not be there if we weren't unable to do it by people's gifts. So it's, you know, it's a great thank you to us. Uh, and uh, we just appreciate it. Any last words of wisdom before we end this oh, interview? No. Oh, that's hard wisdom. No, just a, <laughs> I love all of you. I thank you for what you've done and what you're part of and what you continue to be. And mainly, thank you for being you, because that's what we all really give to people is ourselves and who we are and what we believe. So thank you for being you. Well, as usual, Marion, we always honor and respect you so much, but when you speak, you are always thanking other people. So I'm grateful. I am grateful. That's right. All right. So it was wonderful talking to you this afternoon, and thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Gail. It was great spending time with you, too. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.